this is our uh, first global networks event, and we are with the Israeli Startups Disruptive AI and Startup Hub AI. And Ori will the beginning, and I will continue with the Turkish AI startup ecosystem. Hi, Ori. Yes, so, hi. Uh, hi, Betul. Very nice, uh, very exciting having you all. Uh, actually, we have started uh, an initiative. It's called AI Square which is, uh, we are collaborating uh, under uh, the field of, a of artificial intelligence between all MENA countries. So uh, now today we will uh, start our, our uh, collaboration with the Turkish, uh, the, Turkish, uh, the Turkish AI ecosystem, uh, which is represented by TRI, which is an amazing uh, meetup group, which consists of 20,000 members uh, and we'll start our, uh, our session with uh, a presentation of the, uh, of the Turkish AI ecosystem but by Betul. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay, I guess you can see my screen. Uh, I will talk about Turkish AI initiative and try mission, try activities and try ecosystem and entrepreneurship ecosystem in Turkey. And Turkish AI initiative has been established in 2017 and our mission is basically to raise the AI awareness and improve the AI ecosystem in Turkey. And to achieve this, we have some activities and I would like to summarize them in a briefly in, um, in 2018 and 19, we organized Tri Summits and we were planning to organize this in also 2020, but due to the pandemic, we couldn't do it, but we came up with a new activity, which is called Tri Week. And last year we uh, organized Tri Week in the third week of October. And for five days, we hosted 110 speakers in 46 different sessions and four trainings and Turkey's leading companies, tech giants, local and foreign speakers and artificial intelligence professionals came together in the event. And we are organizing Tri Week this year also in the third week of October again, and we are working on the structure of the content. And we have monthly meetups and in that meetups, we are uh, hosting different uh, private sector professionals, startups, uh, entrepreneurs, academicians, and they are providing their use cases and they are sharing their researches and how AI technologies affect different sectors like banking or retail or e-commerce, what kind of technologies are used in such kind of uh, sectors. And um, these are basically in the uh, third week, third uh, Wednesday of each month. And we also organize tri seminars. Tri seminars are uh, targeting the private sector companies. The aim is increasing artificial intelligence awareness. And to achieve this, we are um, creating uh, a context that they can understand how AI uh, affects their um, business lives and how uh, AI is their jobs and how uh, they can benefit from artificial intelligence technologies. And we are also going to run a new investment program. This is also new for us. We will begin in June and, and in the tri week, October 21st, first, we will make a demo day. And in that investment program, there will be industry AI solution provider startups uh, came together with the investors and they are trying to get uh, investment from these investors. And we want to help them to scale globally. And we also have working groups in that uh, nine working groups. We are focusing on the uh, sectoral inventories. We are trying to come up what is going on in each sector and what can be uh, done with our ecosystem. We have a power of mobilizing ecosystem and we can use it to understand what is going on each in each uh, sector. We are looking for uh, sector specific problems and sector specific solutions actually. And we can uh, bring together uh, solution 
and the problem problems and to uh, we can solve them and there are also uh, people who are looking for the sectors and networks and uh, we also bring those kind of uh, needs together and we also have advisory boards academy technology industry and investment committee and Trigo's global initiative is also important for us. We are looking for global partnerships. We want to uh, exchange knowledge. We want to exchange startups. And we want to organize joint events like today we are doing. And we are looking for global mentoring for the startups and the, who need them. And we are also creating some contents. We have a blog. In that blog, we are uh, making artificial intelligence news. We are publishing news. We also publish startup success stories. And we are um, also publishing monthly newsletters. And every month, we are publishing two podcasts. And when it comes to digital interactions, such kind of events uh, increase our digital interactions, especially today's world, these kind of things are very important because everything is digital and people can follow us from LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and also we have meetup group and you can see everything from our website and we also share our news also in Bundle. And we are a team of nine, and I am the ecosystem orchestrator of this team. And I am basically doing the uh, trying to expand our ecosystem, especially for the startups and the academic academician parts. And the ecosystem structure of Turkish AI ecosystem is consists of uh, private sector members, startups and scale-ups, technology provider partners, try fellows who are basically our uh, evangelists in different contexts. They are telling about us, they are uh, attending different events, and sometimes they are taking leaderships in our events. We have academic partners, and there is also tri community, which is consists of different uh, networks and um, also the, the non-governmental organizations. Tri members are uh, companies, private sector companies can support and take an active role in the tri activities. And there are more than 50 tri member companies. And those companies can uh, participate in tri events and activities. Also, they can access startups and academicians. Sometimes they need uh specific solutions or maybe they are looking for consultancy therefore uh, such kind of uh, networks very useful for them and they are also very open to uh get in such kind of networks and take they also can take part in the working groups and have a reach to all uh, try ecosystem stakeholders we are also coming up with the startup map. In this start, try startup map, uh, AI startups who offer products, processes, or resources that solves a problem or market needed with artificial intelligence technologies. And startups take can take place in the try startup map. They can meet companies in the try ecosystem, such as other startups, investors, and technology companies. And there are more than 200 AI startups in our ecosystem, and it is um, increasing day by day. The next startup uh, map will be published in June 2020. And we also have academic partners. As I said, we are in contact with more than 15 universities and 200 academicians. And um, some of uh, there are also four universities with AI undergraduate and 17 universities with uh, AI graduate departments in Turkey. And there are 10 universities that have AI centers. We are very in close contact with uh, these universities and uh, academicians to understand what kind of researches they are focusing on and what is the uh, most related topics that we can also touch upon. And as I said, I, we also try to bring together startups, academicians, and the private sector companies to uh, solve problems all together. We also have technology partners, and they are basically uh, support TRI events in terms of infrastructure, technology, and content. For example, last year's TRI uh, week, uh, Amazon Web Services ran a challenge, and it takes lots of attention also. And when it comes to tri-community, university committees, non-governmental organizations, local networks, 
and have put the topic of artificial intelligence on their agenda, have organized activities in the field, and they have produced content about technology. And we are coming up with the new activities with the community members. And I want to uh, summarize Turkish startup ecosystem. The key startup cities are basically Istanbul, Ankara, and Izmir, but the other cities are uh, increasing the AI interest and startup interest. The, the accelerators, co-working spaces, techno parks are increasing day by day, and there are uh, more than 8,000 startups and scale-ups uh, in Turkey. There are more than 50 accelerators, 40 co-working spaces, and 60 techno parks, and 30 active investor networks. And there are also the, uh, the, the young population of Turkey is very high compared to whole population. And this is an ecosystem differentiator for Turkey ecosystem. And of course, there are some challenges like small amount of investors for series B and later rounds. The, the, these uh, 30 plus active investor networks are mostly for the uh, seed and the, uh, the, the, the beginner level of investment uh, networks. And the ranking, when it comes to rankings, the, according to Global Entrepreneurship Index, Turkey is the 37th rank. And when, according to the Startup Genome Emerging Ecosystem Rankings, uh, Turkey is the 16th uh, place, 16th place belong, belongs to Turkey. And the focused industries are delivery, especially after the Getters investment and Yemex Apetis, uh, the delivery industry is gaining interaction and uh, it's also um, expanding every day. And uh, banking and finance has been always uh, strong industries for Turkey. And therefore the FinTech also uh, focused industries for the startup ecosystem. And also the peak games and the uh, grand games acquisition, peak games unic being unicorn, increased interest for the gaming sector. And the recent developments for the Turkey is especially for the uh, last years, the investments, the amount of investments and the unicorn news are uh, coming up and uh, for the, First quarter of this year, the total amount of funding reached $520 million. And this was an increase of 26% compared to the last quarter of last year. And I want to conclude with the final remark remarks. Uh, the artificial intelligence strategy of Turkey is being developed by the presidency of the Republic of Turkey Digital Transformation Office. And the number of artificial intelligence undergraduate and graduate departments and AI centers in universities are increasing every year. And the number of startups are increasing every year as well. And the proportion of AI startups are increasing. The number of AI startups um, that gets investments also increasing. As the investments also increasing, AI startups that get investment also increase, as I said. And after peak games and get your other unicorns from Turkey will be expected to come out of the artificial intelligence field. And thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can reach us from info at turkey.ai or you can reach us from the, um, our social media accounts. Thank you, Betul. Uh, if you have any questions, so uh, you can also use the chat box uh, of the YouTube channel, and we'll uh, do our best uh, to uh, to answer your questions. And if we if we'll have enough time uh, by the end of this uh, session, we'll also answer uh, this question uh, uh, in the session during the session. So, uh, without fur further ado, we'll continue with our uh, program and introduce the A Israeli AI ecosystem. Uh, Daniel Singer, uh, the mic is yours. Right. Hey, everyone, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, so uh, I will share my screen um, unless you have my presentation already. So you know what, I'll, I'll share my screen so you can see my presentation. Just give me a second. Oops. 
sorry about that. Here we go. Right. Sorry. So thank you. Yeah, Daniel, we lost, we lost, we've lost you. Okay, let's wait a few seconds for Daniel to recover his network. Otherwise, we'll continue with our uh, program. You're back, Daniel? Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, okay. I'm just... Uh... Battling with some internet connection uh, difficulties. I, I really apologize about that. Um, so if you can see my screen now again. Um, uh, my, so my no, name is Daniel. You're not, sharing it. You're not yep. sharing it. Oh, not sharing? Okay. No, no. Let me get back and share it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, startuphub.ai, I'll preface this, this uh, presentation by saying you can view all of the statistics, all of the information and, and generate the same insights by going to www.startuphub.ai. Um, and I'll, I'll walk you through some of the features of the site so you can uh, get uh, a little bit deeper, drill down deeper into the statistics of Israel's AI ecosystem. So by um, uh, stepping back, Israel's AI ecosystem is, is quite successful uh, in relation to the global arena. I'm sure it, it's a, a well-known fact already, but uh, to summarize it, these are some of the statistics and, and some of the figures that are, are currently in effect today. Um, compared to the, the global landscape, I, I think the most impressive uh, aspect of Israel's AI ecosystem is pretty much the per capita, the, the, the pack per punch. There's almost um, uh, uh, almost 1,700 active AI startups. On the website, you can see over 2,250 startup profiles. Um, but the ecosystem is really supported by a, a, an incredible amount of investors. There's an incredible amount of fundraising activity. Um, and it's generated uh, what, achieves, what appears to be some of the highest returns uh, in the Israel ecosystem. Um, this is a graph uh, depicting the number of companies started, number of companies established, and it's grown at a, 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 an increasing, uh, it, if I had to summarize the most it, um, uh, pivotal part of, of Israel's ecosystem in terms of the growth of the startups, the pace really changed in 2013. So I, I've highlighted that for you. Um, and that's a, a period where we saw almost just over two times growth of the number of startups and it started a trend. Um, uh, well, a trend started to take effect and we can dive deeper into why that happened, but Israel's startups, um, uh, Israel's entrepreneurs, uh, really took to the technology around the 2013, 2012 period. Going back, actually, the first day I started up, um, which had a successful exit, or the first two can be um, pointed onto a, a company called Wizcom that was making, that was using OCR technology. And, and uh, while it's not comparable to the same AI tech today, it was considered, and, and they were training neural networks. And they were, and so what they produced was a pen that you can highlight text. The, a year later, uh, and, and so that company IPO'd at, at 150 million. A year later, we had Click Software with their own IPO, albeit at a 30 million and change IPO. Um, but there was activity in 98 and 99. So fast forward to today, we're almost at 224 average, uh, 224 uh, AI startups on average founded yearly, and that's a five year average going back. What's propelled this, in, this investment interest? And perhaps what's propelled in entrepreneur interest to start uh, taking advantage of the technology um, uh, and also a, a cohort of them to start developing the technology from a technical standpoint. 
um, is the, the investor interest and the investor backing. And so we also saw uh, an increase in the number of rounds, which was literally double uh, in also the, the 2012 to 2013 period. Um, and it's robust, it, uh, it, it's so robust that um, it, it's become what appears to be, especially by pundits of the ecosystem, uh, the leading technology. What we're looking at now is almost four, last year, almost 8 billion and change was raised. And we're looking at a 4.5 billion five-year average. Um, this is just to confirm the investor interest, which has backed the ecosystem, like I said, since 99, but pivotally in the 2012 and 2013 era uh, periods um, to what was really unimaginable heights. Today, we're at 4.6 billion. We're just over 4.6 uh, billion raised, and uh, I'll get back to the future uh, of what's to come. The, the reason we're seeing an in increase in the number of investment activity, which has fueled entrepreneurial interest to delve into the technology, capitalize on it, is the simply the investment returns that have been demonstrated. The most popular and, and what may serve as the most inspiration for the startup ecosystem, I'm, I'm sure I'm repeating uh, what many people have spoken about, was uh, in fact the post um, IPO acquisition of Mobileye at 15.3 billion. This graph is depicting startups and companies. Um, and the distinction is a startup that hasn't achieved an exit and a, a company has achieved an exit and it is um, operating post that acquisition. Um, the notable figures are Mobileye at 15.3 billion in 2017. And then we even see uh, Habana Labs. Um, I'll get to Habana Labs at a $2 billion uh, exit, developing chips for, for inference and training. Uh, they're Gaudi and Goya, the names of their two uh, uh, chip products. But uh, in, in, in the broader strokes, in the broader look, perspective of, of, uh, of the country's activity, the 15.3 billion uh, uh, exit of Mobileye contributing to the 2017 incredible 15.8 billion served as a huge inspiration. And it was a really pivotal moment because it did uh, bring the company, um, startups and companies up from 918 million before going back to the 2012 and 2013 periods again there was a pivotal jump as well um, from 140 million to 1.3 billion and the steam really starts to pick up this is where the investors ha have taken notes um, and perhaps has fueled the majority of investment the returns of the exits um, are at six at six times their money invested which is the exit price divided by the total funding raise it's been an impressive return and it's been, it's, it's, it's served as a, uh, an attractive force for investors to uh, invest in the, was, for investors to capitalize on the potential returns. Um, while there has been some movement and variations, we see up to 12.5 and down to six and so on, we are seeing an average of six X and, and uh, for the time being of, of the current year, we've actually seen 7.7 .7 .7 times the money returned um, that's a median multiple, not an average. It's followed that um, the, the, the size of the rounds has seen some increase. We, we've also seen variability. There was, um, there was acquisitions of Trusteer at a, a, almost uh, over 500 million. And, and we've seen acquisitions at, at Quivio uh, by AOL. There's corporations uh, which have really uh, leaded the way of, a, uh, of acquisitions. And, and those are notably AOL and um, Microsoft. Uh, the, the sectors they were purchasing in ranges from on, uh, enterprise software to legal technology and, and legal automation technology, and most prevalent uh, cybersecurity in line with the general Israeli ecosystem, Israeli startup ecosystem. Um, and so, and, and so what's been really attractive, uh, it, it, as I've said, is the returns. We're seeing a growth in the, in the median exit consideration and, and 
certainly this has generated uh, fuel for those parties. What's perhaps the highlight is um, the max meet the, the max exit consideration. So what's the, the highest uh, exit and, and what really serves as uh, comparable for future or current entrepreneurs seeking to well achieve a incredible uh, an incredible uh, startup exit perhaps um, and and most often seeking to um, attain a unicorn status and, and uh, a commensurate exit. So the the max high, the, the max the maximum the ceiling of, of what was achieved was two in 2019 really again um, significantly rose to two billion. That was Habana Labs, the the producer of this um, AI training and inference chip. In 2020, we, we saw a, a little dip, but still over a billion dollars um, of, of Armis security using machine learning for the purpose of, of securing IoT um, devices. And now we're in, in 2021, uh, we've seen 350 uh, as a max, uh, uh, a max price, uh, a max exit consideration. And um, what remains to be seen is the, the future of the Israeli ecosystem, the Israeli AI ecosystem. Um, if, we, if we do want to compare what the future is, already 4.6 billion has been raised. We were not even halfway through the first half of the year. We might expect uh, a record setting year um, and all of the success that would follow um, past the previous year. So um, I'll leave it at that. If anything in this presentation is of interest and if you're interested in seeing more of the Israeli AI ecosystem by statistics and figures, um, or if you're looking for uh, startups, interesting startups, I suggest you go to startupup.ai. Um, you can search all of this information um, you'll have to register, of course, but uh, it's freely available. And um, if you have any personal questions, please feel free to email me at daniel at startuphub.ai. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And now we can continue after uh, we got uh, both countries' uh, AI ecosystem uh, overview. We can start up, we can start our uh, uh, present a uh, startup presentation. We'll start with Siler from Cbot, uh, Turkey. Uh, the stage is yours, uh, uh, Siler. Yes, thank you. So, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, so, I'm Siler. I'm the co-founder of Cbot. And um, let me give you a quick information about the myself and first and about the team. I graduated from Istanbul Technical University in 2002 and prior to CBOT, I worked in the field of innovation and strategic marketing positions in leading technology, FMCG and energy companies. So not only in Turkey, but also ex as an expat in global and I am in the startup ecosystem, let's say as an entrepreneur since uh, 2016 and uh, with the other co-founders, Mete and Alpay. So we are both all engineers and uh, today I'm going to give you a quick overview of Seabot and about the customers and uh, our projects in around 10 minutes. So let me share my screen first so okay okay so i'm sharing my screen i think it is okay okay. we already talked about this so um Let's start with an overview of our company and uh, briefly we deliver end-to-end -end voice and text-based customer care with artificially intelligent powered virtual agents, um, live chat solutions and conversation IVR. Seabot founded in 2017. As of today, we are serving enterprise customers as a profitable self-funded company. 
And uh, when we look at the, comp uh, the, the, the market, uh, it will be useful to understand the where Seabot stands in global first. According to the Gartner reports, there are 20 hundred uh, vendors globally in the conversational AI market. And it was 1500 six months ago. So it is growing extremely fast. And however, as of today, only 5% um, of existing companies have enterprise grade virtual agents um, working successfully in production. So uh, we see in four broad categories uh, that can be useful when we are grouping the market and the clients using self-service vendors build uh, chatbots by themselves using artificial intelligence services. There are also specialists and uh, natural language processing middleware providers. In this landscape, we are standing in the multi-vertical products group in the world, which means we reshape the use of an AI with an end-to-end hyper-automation approach. And uh, we are very happy that the Gartner uh, listed Seabot among the world's leading virtual assistance companies in 2020. So the reason for this success is not the only the technology we have, but also the fact that we have turned in this technology into a value um, again and again in, uh, in different types of use cases, in different types of customers. So you see the logos uh, of our clients here, the success stories and uh, some of the success story candidates. So when I look at here, I see um, something else, which is the, uh, the demand. So the increasing demand for the, for the virtual assistance. So you can see how a crazy year was 2020, not only in the terms of the virus itself, but also the digital transformation effect of the, of the pandemic. So um, this slide is also showing our history. A uh, company founded in 2017, but we started in 2015 in a research and development center of the Istanbul University. Uh, we work with academicians to build the technology. We did some custom text mining projects using an, our NLP at the beginning. And our first virtual assistant project was uh, Ask Ish Bank, and uh, it's an artificial intelligent frequently asked questions chatbot uh, on Ish Bank's website. It is now known as a Maxi now, and it is integrated nearly all the channels. Uh, so after this success, we started working with not only the leading banks, uh, and insurance companies such as ING, QNB, BBVA, HDA, and Zirat. Zirat is the, the largest bank in Turkey, but also smaller institutions in, in finance. And 2019, uh, in 2019, uh, INGO, this is the ING's virtual agent, has been selected as the best uh, among all uh, ING business units globally. So in addition to the projects uh, we created from scratch, we got our two important banking deals uh, when their virtual agents were already in, uh, in production. And the first one is Guarantee. And uh, they used to work with a US company, Nuance Communications. And the other one is Zirat. They used to work with, uh, with an, a local vendor in Turkey. So the finance is top all over the world, but in addition to the finance, uh, the, another area we, um, we deal as an expert, as a company is uh, at this point is the retail. We started to work primarily with the marketplaces like Amazon and 11, eBay. Then in 2020, new brands were added to our retail vertical. You see here the logos of uh, Gitter and Kocstash, they're very big. Retailers in, retailers in Turkey. Um, most of the projects in retail are in the customer support side. 
So in addition to the retail and banking, our virtual agents are acting in many different sectors like airlines, telecom, media, automotive. So you see some uh, family brands, Ford and Mercedes here. So we have a STAR project. This is a government project. Government projects are uh, one of the top projects in when you are thinking about the virtual agents. And uh, so this is an, uh, the first project that we did with the Ministry of Education was uh, to support the smooth transition of for the remote education, it is called EBA. And uh, the second one is the corporate virtual assistant of the, the, of the ministry itself. And EBA broke a record by meeting 10 million messages in the first weeks and we opened and uh, we still got 500k messages in average per day. So uh, in a day. So it is one of the, I think, biggest the, uh, the virtual assistants all over the world in terms of the volume of the messages. So the other logos at the bottom are the other companies that we work uh, together. We offer different types of uh, solutions beside the chatbot. So these are the, uh, the success stories and um, then we became a market leader in 2019 uh, and we explain our market leadership uh, with the three concepts. The first one is experience and the second one is speed and the third one is quality. Since 2017, we work with 42 enterprises and uh, for 60 projects, which means our team is exceptionally experienced. And not only to create, but also to keep existing virtual agents successfully alive. And uh, one of the important points also when we are planning our product map roadmap is always decreasing the time to market because long duration times means high cost for the customers. As of today, we can deliver projects in a max four weeks from the, uh, from, from the scratch. And the last one is, as you see in the screen, is the quality. And that means we have the highest accuracy and the coverage rates in the market. And it's not just because we have a strong NLP. Uh, it is also, uh, we have added many algorithms and new features during this uh, period. So before I give a floor to the next presentation, I would also like to talk a little bit about the use cases that we deployed. We basically divide uh, the usage areas of the virtual agents into three and uh, empowering the customer, empowering the employee, and also empowering the agent experiences. For the customer experience, in addition to covering and 20 digital customer self-service for any industry with, uh, with the custom projects, we also launch a pre-trained virtual agents for banking, e-commerce support, and they are ready to deploy. So it is gonna take uh, max one week, two weeks to deploy these specific use cases. So there is also a demand for the internal bots to improve the employee experience, especially in the uh, human resources and uh, IT support. And I think this area is gonna expand when even more with the effect of the remote working. And on the agent side, um, bots do not support the customers or employees. Also, they can assist the call center agents to work more efficiently and more accurately. And I strongly believe that the call centers um, starting to work uh, remotely uh, over the cloud and to use artificial intelligence in, in this customer contact center area will definitely increase. So this is all I'm going to say for today. And thank you so much. And if you have any questions, just shoot me an email to uh, C-I-L-E-R at cbot.ai. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Chiler. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name in the first, uh, in the first time. <laughs> It's uh, Turkish is quite new, new for me, but uh, yeah. since you started speaking English, maybe I'll start also uh, learning. <laughs> Turkish. 
So uh, yeah, my 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 name is a little bit difficult. It's the typical Turkish name. So Chiller is okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Very, very impressive, and thank you very much for for this interesting uh, intro. Now we'll move forward to uh, Mehmed. Mehmed, I hope I pronounce this right. Mehmed Ali Erdal uh, from uh, Prime Search. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, Ori. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for the video sharing. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Mehmet Ali Erdal, founder of Metaforma Prime Search. And before I have to share my screen, of course. Yeah. Thank you, AI Square and TRAI, for your kind invitation. Today, i like to briefly mention about Prime Search. What is Prime Search? How this idea came up? And where are we now? Prime Search is a research project of our mother company, Metaform. Metaform is focused on open source technologies, but in the last five years, we are focused on AI completely. Like Prime Search, some of our research projects have been funded by the Turkish government. At the same time, we also completed award-winning government projects in Turkey in various areas from environment to defense. Since 2014, we have started to develop product that we can sell to the world and complement each other. The first of these product was ecosystem management this app has been developed to meet internal and external all of business ecosystems, thematic or startup communities. Apart from usual features, each ecosystem needs related companies, talented researchers to increase its memberships and become a living body. On the other hand, each ecosystem constantly needs relevant news, events, calls to get attention and increase the loyalty of members. We have seen the ecosystem get stuck on producing content and finding talent on companies. Instant search engines could not help enough in this regard. It's not easy and effective way for a person to click and read thousands of links on the search engine result page. We thought it could be a software that learns the subject instead of people. Uh, that's why we developed Prime Search to meet the specific data needs for corporations and all kinds of ecosystems. And uh, this is the Prime Search user interface, and this is the Prime Search user experience. Prime Search has focused on Tesla, and these are here the subject of interest, like executives of Tesla financials or investors or suppliers defined by the customer. Customers defines the team with the same interface simply by adding the nodes. After the definition of team, our scientists finalize the team and run Prime Search. Prime Search performs the search, read, and evaluation cycle in the internet constantly. Within the information provided, customer and under supervision of the data scientist. Prime Search automatically collects and ranks the web pages containing the specific information for the user and updates them at certain intervals. With Prime Search innovative interface, the user can visually browse these collected web pages or use it in different forms. All the time, we realized that Prime Search can be a very powerful tool in itself. At the beginning, the Prime Search was only acting as a private thematic search engine. In the meantime, we started to extract certain information from the collected pages, information like address of comp addresses uh, companies in the certain qualifications, which the user is looking for. Last year, we were able to find the websites that are selling a certain product and read the price and currency information on the product page with the computer vision and the series of complex methods and track the value. 
while all this happening, we were browsing the websites of 15,000 universities around the world and extracting information uh, such as researchers, talents, projects, news, or something like that uh, with the custom main extraction effort. Here are some applications. We can use prime search with digital media and new search, market and open search, researchers or talent search, product or and seller search, company address and the poise search, real estate search, industrial or intellectual property violations search, social media tracking and analyzing. Also, prime search has a tailor made AI services like similarity, auto tagging, auto categorization. Crawling and parsing, tracking and the notifications, sentiment analysis, price reading, custom extraction. These services also, we can provide the services uh, individual of, uh, ex with Prime Search. Here are some potential customers, corporations in all sectors who has more than 30 white colors and who has business departments such as strategy sales partners management procurement or hr all kinds of government institutions political parties and election candidates sport teams celebrities and brands stock markets broker firms and their private customers research institutes or universities ngos or, or npos uh, thematic or startup ecosystems News or marketing agencies and media corporations, product, price, seller, buyer searching, online stores. Uh, uh, people focus on sponsored specific domains such as autonomous cars, prebiotics, COVID, or uh, some kind of topics. And also, uh, there are some new business opportunities with Prime Search. Uh, for example, with Prime Search, you can collect specific type of properties that are on online sale in London area uh, for your investor customers. Or uh, with Prime Search, you can build a search engine for Real Madrid team, contains scores, transfer, bullets, their houses, wives, or cars, or something like that. And you can sell it uh, for one cent for monthly to the millions of funds of Real Madrid. Uh, what is our sales strategy? The main business partners are meetings so, of uh, telco operators, cloud operators, data center owners, because they need to new value added services and to sell their empty data centers to, uh, to their corporate customers and consumers. Software companies and in, in, integrators who have already uh, corporate customers. Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, online markets to reach them their installed base. Global consulting firms like Deloitte, PwC, or something like that. Public relations companies, digital media companies, marketing and news agencies, who already have corporate customers and consumer subscribers like students or professionals. There are the companies who are buying the, the AI startups, whom they need to internet or legacy data searching and digging who need to data mining and machine learning applications, whom already knows the machine learning is the key of the sustainable growth because all digital assets refer to real business decisions. What we are looking, we are looking business partners, business professionals all over the world. Finally, uh, to sum it up, I would like to show you Prime Search from a video. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmed. Uh, now we move forward. Can a person read in one minute or in a day? With traditional search methods, your employees must your, your website separately in order to find the information. Mute yourself. And they need to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we move. <laughs> we'll move forward to our uh, Israel uh, representative, Danny Kalish from I Do Move. Daniel, uh, uh, Danny, the, uh, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay. I, I don't think you can see me. I don't know why. But let's... Okay, can you see me now? Hi, everybody. So I'm happy to be here. And uh, my name is Danny Kali from IDUMU. IDUMU, by the way, stands for I Do Movie. 
So that's the name of the company. And I would like to uh, talk with you about the next generation of uh, video. So I'll share my uh, presentation. Hopefully you can all see it. And thinking about uh, everything that uh, we discussed so far. So uh, we all know that there is much more data and there is much uh, more uh, smarter AI algorithm that analyze the data. But we actually decided to focus on the last mile, on how you are sending the, your message, how you are telling the message to the customer. And, and we know that just by replacing the last mile with a better user experience uh, used in the video, you can immediately gain 70% of the value. So the same product, the same offer, just with a better last mile, that's uh, uh, how you can get value. And there is a very strong uh, uh, quote that I bring here from Forbes saying that companies that will not uh, uh, adapt and will not talk with Generation Z in a video format will just uh, vanish. And obviously all of this is done as part of the digital transformation on, on a different type of screen. So looking at the web evolution done in the last 30 years, the web started as a static brochure, but very quickly added the very advanced capabilities like uh, real-time uh, data extraction, uh, personalization of the page, making the page as sensitive to the location, uh, to the user, uh, and of course, actionable. But all of this gone when you are talking about video. So video, original video is still a, a static brochure experience. And what we are defining as the next generation of video is actually a video that is generated in real time based on the latest data, a personalized data, and the video itself is sensitive to location, uh, device, and is actionable. Um, so kind of on a high level, we are taking video and data, combining it automatically using uh, AI algorithm and are able to generate video in real time. Uh, we are already working with uh, some of the leaders in uh, different type of sectors. So the main sectors that we are active are on the screen. Uh, banking is a very big sector for us. We are working with most of the big banks in the United States. Insurance is also a, a very strong sector. We are working with the biggest insurance company, uh, for example, Allianz in uh, Europe. Uh, and, and as you can see, this is not uh, uh, industry specific. So gaming and telecom and mortgage, etc. So this is the, the partial list of our customers. Most of them are using it for communication with their customers. So we are addressing B2C enterprises. Now, talking a little bit about uh, AI in the short time that I have here, so basically, I like to think about this as when I'm telling you a story as a human being, my story is getting better every time I'm telling it. So I, I like this quote from Paul McCartney, it's getting better all the time. And, and that's the type of experience that we are also trying to bring to the video domain. So originally, when I thought about AI in the video domain, I was thinking, when is the time where AI can actually replace the human uh, uh, creative. So instead of going to, uh, to uh, some famous uh, Tarantino type of director, I can go to AI. But currently this state is still far away. But what we are doing is we are recording all the different uh, creative alternatives because when Tarantino is making the decision, he's not sure what's the best way to tell the story, what's the best way to tell a joke or to present it, etc. But if we are recording the different options, then we can optimize the story as we are collecting feedback from viewers. So let's take a think about a typical customer of ours like uh, Allianz. Allianz is trying to communicate effectively with the customers. For example, uh, one of the use cases is uh, I've just purchased uh, an insurance. The policy is very, very complicated. The customer is probably confused. 
if Allianz is able to communicate effectively with the customer, he will be more uh, satisfied, more loyal, he will be more engaged digitally, and he can actually buy uh, more product from Allianz. Now, the personalization here goes very deep. So I just put here on screen some of the elements uh, that uh, we are using to generate the video. And there is more than 40 uh, data points based on the contract. Uh, for example, uh, uh, do you have a, a car coverage? Uh, uh, do you have coverage for extreme weather, etc.? And the number of different ways to tell the story is actually more than 50,000 combination. And each combination is generated in real time based on the latest data. So that's a very uh, powerful way to communicate. Another uh, example, which I may actually start, try to share the video with you. Let me see if I will be able to share the video effectively. Let me try to do this. So this is something that uh, we are doing with uh, Vodafone uh, in the UK. And imagine that uh, uh, Vodafone wants to communicate with tens of millions of customers and offer them uh, an upgrade to the new iPhone. So this is an actual project that we did with Vodafone a couple of uh, months ago. So that's a specific video that a customer named Jennifer received with a unique offer from Vodafone to her. So I'll, I'll play the video. It's a one and a half minute video and I'll stop just to clarify some things. Get ready and welcome to a new era of iPhone. Here's your unmissable upgrade. Me iPhone 12 mini. The world's smallest, thinnest, lightest 5G phone. Featuring the fastest chip in a smartphone. So until now, there were a couple of decisions that were made and they can be made based on business logic or based on AI. The first decision was to present iPhone 12 mini and not the iPhone 12 Pro, Pro Max, whatever. And this can be done based on their past purchases of Jennifer. The second decision was, you know, what color is of iPhone I want to present. The third decision is what feature of the iPhone I want to, to tell because I cannot go over all the features. So to some customer, I may highlight the camera features and, and, and that's another decision. And throughout the video, you can also see here the discover more sign and the discover more meaning that the video is interactive. So if I want to learn more about the the chipset or about 5G or about anything, I can just click and get additional information. A new phone needs a new plan. And we think you'll love this one. Giving you unlimited data, unlimited minutes and texts, and roaming in 81 destinations. That's along with 5G at no extra cost including where you live. So here we see additional decisions. So not everybody get a, an offer for unlimited data and the unlimited text. So that's part of the, again, either business logic or AI making the decision. And here you can also see that I can use the current location of Jennifer. And this doesn't need to come from pre-knowledge because like every web page, I know the context. So based on IP address, I know your uh, location, I know your device, etc., and I can adapt the video automatically to Jennifer, which is in Birmingham, and I can tell her that in Birmingham we have 5G coverage. Wait, there's more. You also get a ton of amazing benefits, like the latest iPhone every year, free iCloud storage for three months, an extended two-year warranty, weekly treats and offers with very me rewards, and free Apple TV Plus for one year. All on our award-winning network, and all for an admissible price. 
which includes your upgrade discount. So, only one thing left to do. Grab your unmissable up. So this is a 90 second sales cycle. At this point, Jennifer got all the information she need about the price, about the benefit, about the discount special offer. And if she wants, she can close the, the deal right now. So through the video, she click upgrade. And, and by the way, the result is that this is the most effective uh, channel comparing to any other channel. So personalized video is actually generating a business result and is proven to be the best uh, communication channel. And the most obvious thing, by the way, is just looking at completion rate. If I would send you a generic video, most of you would just skip uh, the video after you know 20 seconds. But because of the personalization, people are watching the video until the end. Actually, the statistic is saying that more than 75 percent of all viewers will finish uh, watching the video and then, of course, uh, taking the action that you want. So, uh, jumping forward, Get I guess. Ready. Sorry. I'll skip this, but I just wanted to show you that in terms of creative, Alliance took a different approach. This is live action with actress and actually with horses and unicorns and they can and they did a wonderful video which is also funny and informative so you are not limited to any creative approach because part of the success is that any company can tell the story in the most creative way that they want uh, last thing about our platform so that's really an open platform end to end every company can do can work on it by itself. So many of our customers have internal teams that are working on the platform. Some of them are hiring an external agency that is doing the video creative as well as all the, the dynamic elements. What you can see here that the, the video distribution is done to all the existing channels. So you can watch the video uh, inside your uh, game or inside your application. In the previous uh, presentation, interesting presentation from CBOT, we, we learned about intelligent assistant. So we are also integrating with intelligent assistant. So imagine that you, you had a conversation with intelligent assistant. He asked you different questions, got uh, uh, data from you. For example, if you have a problem, what's your problem? Maybe you think your bill is too high. What month do you think your bill is too high? And then immediately in real time, you are getting a, a, a video. Hey, Danny, here is explanation of your uh, April account and, and you see it on video. So we think that a lot can be done in text, but not everything can be explained in a short text message. And there are areas where you want actually to see a video. So a 30 second video, 60 second video, which is personalized and, inf and informational. We are also integrating with different data sources so we can get the data directly from the marketing cloud or your CRM system or through an API. We, we provide the full tools for defining your uh, building blocks, connecting them, and of course, uh, generating the video itself in super uh, fast uh, speed. Uh, it takes seconds for the video to start uh, playing and uh, in high quality. So that's uh, the story of Idomu and the next generation of uh, video. I provide here my email. So if you are interested to learn more about solutions or use cases in insurance, banking, gaming, anything, feel free to uh, approach me. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Thank you all, uh, all the representatives from uh, Turkey and from Israel. Now we will move forward to our next uh, uh, phase, which is, uh, uh, we'll have now the panel, which will be hosted by Elite Geller. Thank you, Elite. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi. 
Hello, Hi. everyone. So uh, welcome to our panel. We wanted to discuss uh, and have a roundtable around um, AI, both uh, in Israel as well as in Turkey, and the understand better the ecosystem. I have with me uh, Yorai Feinmesser, uh, General Manager at Disruptive AI uh, Venture Fund, and Halil uh, Aksu, um, the founder of Turkish AI Initiative. Uh, hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Afternoon. Great. So maybe we can start with uh, just if you can give us a little bit background of where you come from um, and about your uh, experience. Uh, Halil, do we want to start with you? Thank you, Elite. And, and let me first start with thanking um, you, Elite, your eye and the whole team and our team in, in making this possible. And this is the first of its kind uh, for uh, building the bridge between the Turkish uh, AI ecosystem and the, the Israeli AI ecosystem and hopefully uh, provide um, prosperity and, and you know, collaboration opportunities for both sides and beyond uh, and make Israel a jumping board for Turkish AI startups and make Turkey a jumping board for, um, for um, Israeli uh, AI startups. And so I'm very excited. Um, as you just said in the introduction, um, it happened to be in 2017, uh, when in the United States, there was a very famous conference, the Asilomar Conference on Beneficial AI, where the world of AI leaders gathered and uh, agreed on 23 principles of AI research and AI ethics and so forth. So that um, conference struck me very much uh, and I said, we must do something as well in Turkey. Uh, and um, I've gathered a few friends. We did a few nighttime um, meetings, uh, and then we facilitated a workshop with participants from various um, stakeholders like um, NGOs, startups, academia, private sector, and so forth. And in May 2017, we established the Turkish AI initiative with uh, two objectives, with the mission of raising the AI awareness and with uh, fostering the AI ecosystem. And that's basically what we're doing uh, passionately since 2017. Uh, before that, and still during that, I'm a professional management consulting uh, consultant working on digital transformation, helping companies to harness the power of digital technologies, including AI, and fulfilling their strategy, fulfilling their, um, uh, their business objectives. Uh, before that, I worked for Gartner uh, for 12 years, and I traveled many times uh, to Israel because our head of the regional head office was in Tel Aviv, uh, and I enjoyed it very much and still have many friends uh, over there. Uh, before that, I worked for SAP, and originally I'm from Germany, so I'm quite an international guy traveling uh, the world and, and building bridges between different cultures and between different technologies. And hopefully uh, this is a start uh, for a very strong and very uh, prosperous partnership between uh, the Israeli ecosystem and the Turkish ecosystem. So in a nutshell, that's me. Great. Thank you, Elit. Thank you. Thank you, Alil. You're right. Uh... Good afternoon. Uh, first, thank you all for uh, joining this event and uh, I'm very happy to take part of it. Uh, my story begins at the Israeli intelligence force, which is a major pillar of the startup industry because many people coming out of the Israeli uh, IDF, you know, we are uh, starting their startups and, uh, and their entrepreneurship and, and moving forward with their initiatives. Um, and what I've been doing for the last few years is actually dealing with AI and uh, data science. And this is the thing I decided to move forward and to uh, establish and found, founding uh, Disruptive AI is actually the first Israeli AI focused fund. And, you know, sometimes being the first is, uh, is the opportunity to look on the broader uh, opportunities. And suddenly what happened last year is that uh, there was a kind of a peace initiative in the Middle East where we started to establish and regulate our relationships with the, with the UAE. 
moving forward to other countries. So uh, we took we took advantage of that and start to build bridges to those countries. And then I got the phone call from TRAI guys, uh, and they told me, "Hey, we are already regulated. Let's do something because the bridge is not there." So we were we all laughing about the you know the last time I've been to Turkey and the last time Philip was in Israel and. And we decided to take a step forward and, and build the bridge and uh, open the opportunities for all sides, uh, corporates and startups to meet each other. So we are both uh, players here and we are committed, I think, uh, to help those sides to be more close and more uh, collaborative and, and try to foster that. And from my point of view, this uh, meetup, this first time uh, meetup is the, is the beginning of that. So thank you for that. And let's let's uh, hear your questions and maybe okay. share some, some knowledge. So, um, so following on on what Uri said, uh, definitely we see um, following the peace process um, in the past year um, a huge momentum around the Emirates, uh, Dubai, Bahrain, and the like. Um, Halil, do you feel that? Turkey is taking advantage of, of the uh, close relationship and the open, as you said, uh, um, um, political uh, aspect of things. But do you think that from a startup perspective and ecosystem uh, around AI, do you think it's taking uh, a real collaboration uh, momentum or um, there's still a huge room for growth? Um, this is a great question, Eli. Thank you very much. Um, you know, in short, with one word, I think there is a huge room uh, for opportunities and for growth. Uh, the two countries of Turkey and Israel um, have a very close relationship uh, since we're both um, US allies and, and NATO allies um, and have common interests in the region of peace um, and work usually on the same sites um, uh, and and in, in terms of defense industry, intelligence uh, collaboration, the two countries uh, work very closely together. Having said that, on um, this side, uh, the new startups, uh, the high techs and deep techs um, and the innovative uh, startup, I think, you know, um, Israel is regarded as uh, the startup nation, right? And is, uh, we very much look up to um, the capabilities of Israel. Um, and therefore, I think, you know, when it comes to artificial intelligence and adjacent technologies, there is a lot Turkish startups uh, can learn from Israeli startups, probably also vice versa. And from a, you know, when you talk about the Gulf and I, I'm so glad I'm travel to the Gulf as well. Usually I had two passports. Uh, one I used to travel to Israel and the other one I used to travel to the Gulf States. I think now it is not necessary anymore. Uh, and and uh, this is very nice. Um, but um, you know, Turkey, uh, from an economy and from a population perspective, um, is, is larger than the whole Gulf combined, um, including Saudi Arabia um, and, and all the other GCC uh, countries. Uh, and so when you look at B2C, kind of what just Danny presented, the opportunities in an 85 million population nation are huge compared to, you know, Bahrain or Kuwait. Uh, they have a lot of, of money, uh, but in small countries, basically, and small populations. And from an awareness perspective, also, I think uh, I can easily say that Turkey, from a technology adoption perspective, is closer to Europe than it's cl closer to the Middle East, basically. And from a lifestyle perspective and an overall education perspective of the people. So, um, and, and Israel, of course, is basically a pearl in the Middle East, uh, very distinct from all the surrounding uh, Arab countries, basically, in, in their form of educational level and development level. And yeah. I think, therefore, we are very much aligned and there is everything ready to do a great partnership between the two countries. And until today, this was done mostly in the areas of defense industry and intelligence and so forth. And now I think we can move to the next chapter, which is 
high tech and deep tech and especially artificial intelligence. Perfect. Looking forward. Great. So, Yorai, can you help us understand maybe a little bit more about the talents, the AI talent uh, in Israel and how do you think um, it could leverage um, Turkey based on what we've heard from Halil just now? Okay, so uh, I think we can refer talents or AI talents as a, as a rare, uh, rare uh, advantage of Israel, but I think it is, uh, it, its problem is with it. The word rare. There are not uh, there are not enough AI talents. Uh, those are uh, growing in Israel are very strong in uh, uh, deep tech uh, capabilities. Many PhDs and many uh, experienced uh, AI uh, and qualified AI uh, talents. But there are not enough for the Israeli industry. There are not enough for all the startups that we have here. We have you know uh, so many startups uh, doing AI and and then we have to look around where we can find some others that might find it uh, interesting for them to, to cooperate with Israel and to provide uh, some of their knowledge and, and maybe uh, do some outsourcing for uh, AI talents from out of Israel. Uh, and I think from that perspective, I discovered a few weeks talking to TRAI that there is a vibrant uh, community of AI and data scientists um, within the Turkey, and uh, probably it would be very interesting for Israeli startups to find uh, relationships with those with those uh, talents. Uh, I think what happens in Israel with talent is that they stay in Israel. I mean, they work for the Israeli companies or for the giants. You know, the the big companies that uh, pay high salaries and take the the good minds. Uh, I think in Turkey what probably sometimes happen is that they look for uh, working in other countries and, and this is where you can find a win-win situation uh, and provide that. So um, Halil, can you um, explain from your perspective from Turkey, uh, enlighten us with uh, how does the talent uh, of technology and, and within technology, specifically AI, what uh, Yorai refers to, um, how does that look? There are uh, two news to this. There's a good news and the bad news. The good news is um, there is um, a lot of graduates coming out of, uh, out of university who could be leveraged as resources. And another good news actually is that the demand for AI talent is, is huge. Basically, all the startups, all the big corporates, all the technology vendors are hiring for AI not only data scientists, not only Python programmers, but also data engineers and, and uh, similar relevant and related uh, roles. The bad news, though, is that um, not only with COVID, but before that as well, the talent market has become a global market. And, and if you know English and if you know Python, uh, you have the chance uh, to work on the planet anywhere sitting anywhere, basically, connecting to anywhere and doing uh, uh, doing good job anywhere. So this means that any Turkish talent could easily do work for an Israeli AI startup or a corporate and vice versa. And together, they could do solutions to any other company on the planet, uh, collaborating together, sitting in Tel Aviv and in Istanbul or in any other place. And, and basically um, developing solutions together. So um, yes, there is there's big opportunities. And to all our listeners, I would like to announce, and this is basically the essence of um, the partnership between Yorai uh, and his team and, and the Turkish AI initiative, our team, basically that we would like to be this, this uh, analogy of being a bridge is a truly honest one. So um, for all the talent and for all the startups, our communication channels are very open to you for applying for jobs, applying for tenders, applying for you know, reaching to the right customers. Um, and, and please make use of this bridge, get in touch with us, and we will try to help as much as we can um, to make this uh, partnership work and, and deliver value to both sides. Great, thank you. 
Um, so we understand how the two um, ecosystems can collaborate around talent and it's exciting. Um, wanted to touch on the point that was mentioned earlier in the session where Turkey is really strong around industries such as banking, insurance, uh, very strong in manufacturing, uh, auto and energy and the like, um, and large industries. Um, how, um, Halil, how would you recommend, um, how should startup connect with these Turkish corporates? How can startups add value and get, uh, you know, initial feedback from these large corporates? Yeah. This is, now we get specific, uh, Elite, right? Now the rubber hits the road. How, what, yeah, what it has you to. Do? So there, there are three channels, basically. First one, as I said a minute ago, uh, the AI startups get in, can get in touch with us and we will try to open their door. So we, we are not, we are by no means, we are not commercially interested in getting commission or whatever, whatsoever. So we just want to grow the ecosystem. So therefore we basically, um, if any, if like Danny and all the other people have presented in this event would like to get to know any corporate customer, the Turkish AI initiative has very close relations with more than 100 companies, uh, the largest ones in, in Turkey, various industries. So that would be one channel. They also can get in touch with those companies directly. We could provide them the names and, and you know, the, the, the communication information because those companies ask us always for creative AI startups because that's what we promise them, that we will scout the world basically um, and, and try to help them to find the best solution. Uh, another way um, would be to do this kind of events and, and demo days and invite people. So it would be a more an indirect approach um, to, to get hold of uh, prospect customers. And what we also in the preparation yesterday when we were thinking and, and basically preparing for, for this um, uh, meetup, um, global technology companies like Microsoft, Google, IBM, SAP, and, and so forth, they are also a great jumping board. Now, if you would have an AI solution which is integrated with the SAP system, uh, SAP would have huge interest in promoting your solution to their Turkish uh, SAP customers. And there's about 4,000 SAP customers in Turkey. Uh, so um, the same with Microsoft. If you use Microsoft Azure, um, cloud platform uh, and, and their capabilities for your AI solution, Microsoft would have a huge interest in promoting you in Turkey as well, and vice versa also for Turkish startups to help them get uh, reach to uh, the Israeli market, uh, for example. So there are various ways how uh, Israeli startups can penetrate the Turkish market and for all channels and for always, we are very happy uh, to help uh, our friends and, and make them success succeed in, in their endeavors. Great, and Halil, um, is it mostly these corporates are structured in the same way that we're familiar from the US and, and Europe, meaning uh, if the startup wants to connect, there's, is, is there an innovation? group or do they go through, um, you know, through the uh, business owner or the technology team? All right. How, what would you suggest? It would be very similarly organized as you're used to, as you just described, there's these three uh, stakeholders, basically. The, the business owner usually has uh, the highest interest of gaining the solution, but usually the lowest awareness of what AI is. So they just know it from magazines and say, oh, AI will solve everything. So why can't you come and find me the best recommendation engine and this and that? So they have a huge interest in, in getting to know these uh, fancy uh, AI startups. Um, right. The biggest technology budget is with the CTO or the CIO, the IT technology organization they usually have the biggest money and they have also the best understanding and they also have the developers who will do the integration to their own systems and and grant the data and and provide you know the cloud and and so forth so that would be the second bucket and the third bucket there's in few companies this is not very common and is also not so common in the us and around the globe uh, that what you just mentioned is 
innovation teams and the digital incubators and accelerators and uh, working with startup ecosystems and so forth. In some companies there is, uh, they usually don't have a big budget. They are just a good entrance into the company and they will find help you to find the right stakeholders. So, but these three channels would be possible to penetrate and we are in touch with most of them in most of these organizations. Perfect. Great. So, um... You're right. Can you um, now maybe clarify and, and give us your, your thoughts on those corporates, if they're trying to reach out to developments in Israel, um, whether they know uh, specifically what they want or whether they're not even sure and they're just looking to understand what's out there. What's the best uh, way to get in touch and what do you think uh, uh, they should do? So first, I think that, uh, and I'm familiar with many uh, global corporates, uh, when they come to Israel to do scouting or shopping or whatever, uh, it's like entering a candy shop. Uh, everything looks tasty or, or sweet and you, it's really hard to decide. And nobody is exactly doing what you're looking for, but everything is a little bit, you know, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Uh, Surely, in situation when you are not sure what you what you want to look for, so it, it comes more difficult. So in this case, I agree with it's better to use someone, uh, you know, an insider, someone that knows the the industry, that knows the uh, the players, and can understand uh, what startup could be interesting. In what uh, position is it? Will it be? Uh, is it an early stage or it's a later stage? What will the startup provide what the corporate is looking for and not waste the time? And uh, I think for that case, we will, of course, be happy to help. Uh, either they come through Khalil or through TRAI or, or directly to us, it, it's, it's no matter. And I think uh, uh, the first thing to do is to understand what they are looking for, maybe uh, explain what they are doing and those startups or talents or whatever that are doing AI will actually know what is missing uh, to help them uh, take advantage of AI. And so it's better not to define exactly what you're looking for, but be more accurate on what you're doing and how is your data looks like and so forth. I think uh, Israeli startups will find a lot of interest in uh, corporates from Turkey because it's a huge market and they bring data with them, which is a unique data. It's, uh, it's a different data they could get from other uh, uh, corporates from let's say West Europe also. And from that point of view, I think the corporates might have many things to offer, uh, even early stage startups to be partner with them and you know to be potentially design partners or, or customers and that could be very interesting so uh, identifying identifying those advantages and, and characteristics so it could be very helpful for this engagement and of course we are we will be happy to, to be part of that bridge and, and help uh, also. great um Thank you so much for the information. I think that we've learned uh, a lot about the collaboration and the potential ways to collaborate, uh, you know, the talents, the corporates, the large corporates uh, and the startups. And I think it's extremely exciting. So thank you very much for the information. And um, I urge uh, those startups and those corporates and uh, all the talents to reach out both to Disruptive AI as well as to uh, the Turkish uh, um, AI initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elite. Thank you, Yorai.